Decay of Logos is a small little gem with some serious issues. I ultimately really enjoyed my time in this beautifully crafted world, but not everyone will. In 2014, Decay of Logos was born as a small demo made by one of the devs from Amplify Creations. The game evolved over time and was released on August 30th, 2019 for 20 bucks. It's made by only a handful of people from a Portuguese indie studio using the Unity engine. You are Ada a young white-haired girl. Together with your companion, an elk, you want revenge for what the prince's forces have done to your home village and family. The lore and background have a deep emphasis on visual and environmental storytelling. Take a look at the intro of the game, for example. The game offers you little snippets of information, but relies mostly on the environment to do the talking. NPCs exist and those that are there are performed well in terms of voice acting, but no one is going to spoon feed you plot details. Instead, it is up to you to uncover the mysteries of this rotten land, to find the echo memories left behind by travelers in the past, to read their thoughts and to slowly realize how the world has been corrupted by a royal family in an event known as the Royal Schism. The story Telling is very minimalistic, but after two hours of playing I had a very clear understanding of the world and what was going wrong. It is an impressive detailed narrative told in an interesting fashion. The world is amazing to look at and it oozes with atmosphere. The overall ambience and decay of Logos is stunning in my opinion. It reminded me and viewers of the stream of Zelda, Ashen and Wildstar. Lighting is very well implemented, the level design makes sense most of the time, ancient ruins, castles and other structures remind you of past civilizations and really add to the experience. Walking around in this world, which has a considerable size by the way, is very pleasing. Exploration is rewarded as well with chests hidden throughout the world. The game has a ton of easter eggs and even QR codes hidden everywhere. Find all of them and it will lead you to a secret web page. Completely lore breaking of course, a QR code on a pillar of a ruin, but it was fun to uncover some of the mysteries while streaming this game nonetheless. Regardless, the overall look and feel of the cave locals are definitely a selling point. Another selling point are the puzzles in my opinion. They can be very challenging and require quite a bit of expertise exploration and experimentation. It's being made harder from time to time because your elk is really dumb, but it does feel good when you finally solve a puzzle and unlock the next stage to the game. I feel I hit the nail on the head when it comes to puzzle difficulty, but it is not all great and dandy. Not so much a selling point is the overall polish of this game. This is a rather clunky game, both in movement, fluidity and especially combat. If you can't handle a bit of clunky combat with some weird camera angles every now and then, this is not your game. At least not in the version 1.02. Movement can be a pain, both the movement of Ada and your elk when mounted. Controlling your elk in general is a very frustrating exercise and it's fortunately only necessary for a few puzzles here and there. Apart from those moments, your elk serves as a pack mule, allowing you to store some additional items in the saddlebags, which I thought was a nice touch. And because of the clunkiness, this game is more difficult than it needs to be. I've died numerous times because of wonky controls, because dodging didn't work, because the locking stops every time you are stunned or knocked back in a fight, because of many things actually. The AI is also usually not smart enough to really pose a threat. Instead, the combat is more about learning abilities, dodging and striking when you can while trying to keep your character in check and keep the camera steady. Apart from issues induced deaths, I've also kicked the bucket a few times because the game is actually challenging. Especially the dungeons this game offers, arcs, come with some serious challenges and some amazing rewards. They're fun to explore, they're tough to complete, but you usually walk away with a serious upgrade to your gear. The boss fights are also well designed, not easy to learn, but definitely rewarding once you are able to kill the boss after a couple of tries. Which brings us to progression. 
Progression in terms of gear and abilities is not super extensive, but Decay of Logos definitely offers a few different ways to play the game. There are some magic options, although playing as a mage isn't really viable because magic casting costs health and generally doesn't do enough damage. The game also comes with plenty of weapons and armor. There are one-handed or two-handed weapons, magical weapons that are really powerful but break quickly. I found a bunch of bows as well, and the game has around six or seven armor sets to collect. If you collect all pieces, you get a set bonus. Items wear down when used, but can be repaired at a blacksmith once you uncover the main village which acts as a hub. Decay of Logos released with a bunch of bugs and still I have encountered quite a few in the latest version. It's the reason for most of the mixed reviews on Steam. The devs are on point with patches, however, releasing two already that solved a lot of bugs and made the combat more fluid. It didn't stop people to write some negative reviews, however, which I feel, by the way, are warranted, depending really on how you look at the game. So let me tell you what kind of person should get this game and what kind of person should not. This cute little indie game is an action RPG and while the action part is definitely the least well implemented part, it does everything else really well. During my playthrough, the lore, storytelling and beautifully crafted world grew on me. I wanted to know how the story ends and I did. It's sad satisfying, it is subtle, and the symbolism of the characters and their deeds weren't lost on me either. I loved getting immersed in the world. If you're someone that enjoys immersion and lore over smooth combat and gameplay, and you don't shy away from a challenging puzzle, then you should definitely get this game. It took me 12 hours to complete the first run, and now New Game Plus is unlocked, which offers new chest locations, a new armor set to collect, and an even bigger challenge than a regular game. If you are more of a Dark Souls fan, and you enjoy fluid, challenging combat and are more concerned about gameplay than about lore and ambience, then you will probably rage quit, so save yourself the trouble. In my mind, this game is well worth the money, but that will not be true for everyone. Subscribe for more reviews and check out my Twitch where I stream these games live at twitch.tv slash dieworm every Monday, Wednesday and Friday 8pm Central European time. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon, bye bye.